Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I'm demoing how I get nice, shiny, smooth finishes on my car models. And uh, it requires a few different um, materials. First is an assortment of different grades of wet and dry sandpaper, which I have some 600, some 1200, some 1500, and if I want to really get uh, tied up with it, some 2000. Um, so far I haven't used the 2000 on any of the cars that I've done, but um, depends on what I decide and want to build for. Um, That's for large canopies. Yeah. For large windshields on the big scale. Right. I um, didn't bring my sanding block, so I'm liable to get some finger marks in some of the sanding. But uh, I start first, uh, and it, I always do it wet. I start first with a 600 grid. Okay, let me, I want to see, get, I know you get some. There's some orange, orange peel, peel in there, that. but I'm trying to yeah. get it on the camera. Yeah, and so, so I'm going to be working on before. half of this, okay. and then the other half is as it was sprayed. And this is actually a uh, rattle can finish. Primer, two coats of color, three coats of clear. You have to have a sufficient amount of clear so that you don't sand through your color and down to your primer or down to your uh, actual surface, the plastic surface of the model. So I just get the paper wet and spend a few minutes with the 600. This is going to get the biggest, um, biggest bits of uh, the orange peel off. Uh, it'll cut fairly fast, so it doesn't really take a lot of time to get it, uh, get the orange peel out of it. All the other sanding that you're going to do is primarily to take care of the sanding marks left by the coarse 600 grit paper. And you can see now, actually, yeah. I thought I'd actually gone through on the corners, but I hadn't. Uh, it's, um, you have to really be aware of the um, high spots, corners, edges, um, body lines, because when you're sanding and polishing, those are going to be the first areas that are going to go through. Then I, you know, wipe the sanding residue off so I can check and see what I've got left over. Now, this also works well to remove material that got into your paint, like uh, dust. But uh, if you look at it, you can see that in the largest area here, the orange peel is gone. I'm not going to work too much at the edges because this is really just showing the demonstration. So the next uh, grid I'm going to go with is the 1200. Um, and it helps if you buy your wet and dry paper um, and make sure that the color of the backing is different for each grit that you use. Primarily because when you cut a small piece off to sand with it, you don't, have numbers, on you don't have numbers on most of the sheet of paper. So it helps to know the backing colors of the different grits. Well, it helps because if you get your yourself down to where you've worked with the 1500 and then you can't tell the difference between your 2000 and your 600, you wind up going right back to the start again. And uh, only a, a true masochist like you would like doing that, Jim. I was just going to say, I used to be in that kind of pain when I got that between. Which 
The finer grit that you go, the less you really have to worry about time. Because once you get the majority of the orange peel off, <coughs> excuse me, you'll find that um, your sanding, the sanding time required is less. Use some paper towels, maybe, if I need. So you can tell that, again, um, it's getting smoother. Haven't they really improved on the old kits? And well, now, some 1500. Thanks. Fortunately, just doing a flat surface, it's, um, I don't need to be as concerned about the high points, so it goes faster. I'm working on a 71 Dodge Charger RT right now, uh, using this Boyd's Red paint, um, which uh, testers use to market Boyd's colors. And they don't anymore. Yeah, but would you drive a red car like that? Uh, if it was a 71 Charger RT in a heartbeat. Can you say cop magnet with a capital K and M? Mm -hmm. They don't. Yeah. Do they still carry the colors, you just don't call them boys? Uh, no. Not that I know of. I think mine is actually Boyd Sunburst. And I like it. It's a beautiful orange color, but now I'm worried about well, they've brought out a bunch of new colors um, that people uh, that are really tied up with muscle cars really like uh, because they now got the original uh, Ford Hugger Orange, Grabber Blue, and uh, the Dodge uh, Hemi Orange. Uh, I've got the Grabber Blue. Yeah. And they've got... Uh, the um, purple passion or um, plum crazy finish, same color, just depends what you call it based on whether it was a Dodge or a Plymouth. So that's with the 1500. And it's pretty good and smooth. So I'll go ahead and do one more shot with the 2000. So you can see it's been, what, about What's six, seven minutes so far? You can actually uh, buy um, polishing kits for our car models that will take you to, to a 12,000 grit. Yep, that's what I got. Yep, the micro mesh kits. But uh, I haven't done that. And I find it's a lot cheaper going to your local body shop oh, yeah. and buying the, a sheet of wet and dry paper for a buck or two compared to, I think it's 20 or $30 for the micro mesh you know, kit. I was in Okinawa, I used to order a squadron of green putty for like a buck 29 a tube, little bitty tube. Right. Went into a Japanese auto parts store and I bought a tube of green putty about this big. Oh, yeah. About two pounds of this stuff for like 300 yen. Right. Yeah, I used to use the uh, um, spot putty. Bondo spot putty. Yep. The green stuff. And it works really, really nice. Um, like they used the, to have something called Blue Magic Plastic Polish. Right. Great for your canopies and stuff. Yeah. I noticed you got a tube of toothpaste which does the same thing. Right. And those are the other materials that I use. I actually uh, use Brasso sometimes too. Yep. Which That's does a good. really, really nice job. Works good on uh, clear plastic, too. If you get scratches or something the on it. Challenge yeah. I've yes. had. I haven't tried Brasso. I usually just with use a little toothpaste. Brasso, uh, I found yeah. that it can actually make, it seems to make the, pa the plastic more brittle. Uh, I haven't had that problem yet. So, so on. Uh, it could also be the plastic. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, there's def definitely different, differing uh, quality. But see, when I polish it, then I take it to the sink and wash it off. 
you know, I don't just wipe it off, I wash it off. The problem I have had using Brasso, particularly on clear uh, parts, is, uh, as I said, it seems to make the plastic more brittle. And so while I'm polishing with the Brasso, uh, I find that I can get uh, fine hairline cracks. Right, because the, the liquid soaks into the plastic, maybe. I think that might be. Not scientifically proven, just my thought. I haven't had any problems with toothpaste. Have, have not had any problems ever with toothpaste. No, I take that back. I did use it one time when I used a polishing pad with my Dremel. Oh, yeah. Burned a hole right in it. Uh-huh. I would not Lesson consider learned. using a machine to try and do this. Well, I was in a lazier than usual mood. Yeah. I get there too. Okay, so the next step, uh, once you've got the, uh, the finish sanded smooth, yeah. is to take out your toothpaste and just start polishing. You should polish with a damp cloth. So about a minute or two with the toothpaste will get you what looks like a really, really nice glass smooth, shiny finish. And I used to be happy with that. And then I thought I'd try using uh, a different polish after the toothpaste. And that's, uh, that's when I... I actually bought a few smaller uh, packages of different polishes and I settled on the Novus um, number two plastic polish. Just, just does an awesome job. And you can find that in your auto parts store. So. So you can see that the finish is nice and smooth out. Now, there's no real evidence of the, uh, the orange peel that was there. And I didn't bring, I usually use toothpaste, or, um, sorry, t-shirt. I was just saying, use different things. diapers or t-shirts or... Usually use a t-shirt or an old worn out um, cotton um, sports sock. That's like, I got ex-military talking about diapers and polishing. Yeah. It seems to work well when I do the occasional canopy. That's why I was curious. Right. Hmm. Nice, yeah. It's worth forehead. Yeah. Is that, it's crying time. It's time to do it. bit of the Novus plastic polish. And this should bring out a really nice shine. But not quite all the way. There's a third step. So just a little bit of aviation trivia. Dun, dun, dun. The first um, African American Marine Corps pilot just passed away in the last couple days, Lieutenant General Peterson.
Probably Navy people. Started out flying F4U Corsairs in Korea, where he earned Distinguished Flying Cross and many other awards. And then he transitioned uh, with uh, a different squadron, which he was commanding, and then he commanded an air group uh, to the F-4 Phantom in Vietnam. Ted Williams from Panthers from the Marines in Korea. Mm -hmm. He said if he didn't have baseball to go back to, he would have stayed in the Marines and kept on flying. Yep, true fact. Wait, is it true or is it a fact? Is there a empirical evidence that follows that? Well, if I learned anything in the military, it's that facts may be facts, but truth is relative to the acts are grinding at the time. That's right. And truth can be stranger than fiction. Truth can also be stretched a lot farther. Okay. Nice glass smooth finish. And the finisher is, of course, we all know there is no shine like mothers. Yeah, do you, uh, are you going to use yeah, a buffer on that? As soon as he's done, I'm going to no. show both sides. Yeah, I'll pull the tape off and you'll get a direct Holy comparison. Crap. That must be originally from the 70s. It is, actually. <laughs> it's from the, <laughs> actually, probably the early 80s. You don't light it on fire first? Well, I was, no. I'm not going to spit shine my shoes with it, so I don't plastic. need to do that. Reminds me of something that happened when I was going to school at Keesler. Yeah. A handful of guys in three bays got together. The barracks had these bays connected with a day room between the three of them. They got together, chipped in on a lid of grass, hashed it up real finely, and mixed it up in some Johnson's paste wax. Above the day room, the hallways, and every floor in every room. Next time they brought the dogs through the building, they went and bruised the <laughs> I like it. What a waste of good pot. <laughs> Yeah, that was the feeling among some of the people. You're supposed to be smoking it. Right, Seth. Yeah. You got it. You got it. The consensus was, though, they went to a good cause. Because everybody enjoyed the holiday watching those dogs kiss themselves. The cops, of course, were absolutely disgusted. There we go. The guys in, all the, in those three bays were to get with all kinds of dire things. Okay, so you do this for all your cars? Wow. Or select cars? Or? I do this for most of my cars. Okay. I'm lazy. I'll admit to that. Yeah. Do you know <laughs> if Calari or Model Master has I'm <laughs> sorry.